Good morning everybody, welcome to another video. It is a morning as well, I've got a bit silly o'clock this morning to come out because uh, we do some rain around about 11 o'clock and it's going to chuck it down with rain and be really windy for the rest of the day. And I really wanted to come out and do some trotting as we did in the last video and this, this video is a little bit of a continuation of the previous video. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, I'll stick a link up there, you can go and have a look. But uh, I thought I'd start where that we finished on that video, um, ran out of light about 12 hours ago now. And we'll have a wander up the rest of the stretch, uh, wind permitting, it is already fairly windy. And as you can probably see from the light, the sun is not up yet, but it's, it's gonna be before too long. So I'm hoping it clouds over fairly quickly, obviously hoping it doesn't start raining. It's about half six in the morning now. It's, uh, it's the 11th of March, off work today, so, uh, Hence being able to come out early. I took uh, a few days off work at the end of the season just to make the most of it as, it as the weather and the rivers looked in reasonable condition. The Avon's still a little bit high, but I'm, I'm going to try and get down there over the weekend. I'm still hoping to perhaps get to the 7 and the Y as well before uh, midnight on Monday. Well, it'll be midnight on Tuesday, won't it? <laughs> before uh, Monday's the last day of the uh, of the season. But we'll get started in here. We'll do exactly the same as yesterday. Um, I've got my mashed bread as feed, as you can see there. What I've done with this, as, as I normally do, is one end's quite stodgy and one end's very runny. I'm just going to get this in, let that cloud up, and then give it a few minutes to get the fish interested. And then we'll run a bit of bread flake through. I'm going to just concentrate on bread flake today and uh god this stuff's messy <laughs> we'll concentrate on bread flake although i have got some maggots so we can go on maggots if we fancy it i'm just hoping to to catch a few fish before it starts raining that's really the, the idea and uh before it gets too wet i've got with me my ever faithful dawa tournament pro 15 foot on there, as you can probably see, I've got a Drake alloy stem stick float. I do like a alloy stem stick float when I'm roaming about because it can cope with anything really fast water, even static water. It's not ideal, obviously, but it will certainly do a job in, in all sorts of water. Uh, and I've got my Abu Garcia 506 Mark II reel on there. You can probably hear the wind is picking up already. So uh, I think we should probably get cracking. I'll get this rod set up as I keep feeding a bit of bread mashing. A bit of a nothingy swim this, but last night I was fishing a little bit upstream from here and I saw a roach sort of porpoise out along here. Which is why I dropped in here and we had to cut the fish out of here, cut a chub. So I just thought it'd be worth perhaps starting in here, although we did have two fish out yesterday, so I'm not too hopeful, but I will start in here and just see if it's settled down a bit so we'll get this rod set up put together and then we'll have a cast looking forward to this just to finish off running you through the gear I've got a 3.3 pound mainline uh, dread and float fish and I've got my own hook links it's 2.3 two i think from memory in the low twos anyway uh hook links i've tied up and i've got a size 12 or 14 on there not sure exactly what but would just give you a rough idea big enough to give us a nice secure hook hold on a chub but uh also fine enough that if we catch any roach it's uh it's fine enough to work on them as well Right, enough waffling, I think. Get a bit of bread flake on and cast in. I'm going to struggle to do a few swims today, <laughs> hunkering down behind these banks. <laughs> I think some of these swims are going to be uh, going to be difficult to fish, even even at the moment. It's very windy already, but you know, you don't mind when they forecast it, do you? Unfortunately, in this swim as well, as soon as that sun comes up, we're going to have a massive shadow across <laughs> across the swim. But uh, can't be helped. Mm. 
it's a green wind landing net. Well, hopefully, as I say, we, hopefully we can finish off how we, sorry, start how we finished off yesterday. A few nice fish. It's just running down lovely. The sort of swim you'd sort of walk past, I, I would anyway, just, just a bit nothing you really. Long straight run, but there's a bit of depth in here. That may be well be why the fish like it. As I mentioned though, we'll have a bit of a row and cover as much water as we can. Maybe in this swim, particular swim, that the fish are not having any of it after we had a few out yesterday. Who knows? <laughs> but only one way to find out. But this river is just such a wonderful, lovely colour for, for trotting. There's like about 18 inches of visibility, foot to 18 inches, about sort of 40 centimetres in new money. It's just enough that the fish can see the bait come in. But not so much that uh, they're scared to, to sort of come out in the river. That's really down lovely. I think we can go a bit deeper. Let's keep this mash bread going in. bite to the wind even though it's a southerly actually it's a bit of bite to it that's just running through there lovely as I say I'm not sure <laughs> what we're going to do having had a couple of fish 12 hours ago out of here I'm just wondering if there's a few more perhaps that we didn't catch yesterday because Ran out of light in here. I was still getting bites at the time. The pace of water in this swim is on the other side there, so well. Hmm. That was a little bit like a bite. I'm not sure it was a bite, but it may well have been the bottom, but. It did seem a little bit like a bite. Yeah, as I was saying, the pace of your water is on the other side here because we're just below a, a bend and we're on the inside. Ah, so we're pulling under there. It's obviously a bit deeper in the middle, despite the fact that the faster water is over there. Well, I am very surprised. I think it's time for a move. I'm very surprised we're not doing any good in there. I'm surprised we haven't done anything, a little chublet or anything. Right, not going to hang about this morning. We're going to move on. I think we're going to just nip downstream before we start working our way upstream. So uh, we'll get off up there. So a nice run down here towards a tree, as you can see. Just spent a couple of minutes putting a bit of mashed bread in, but I do like to get in, get the bait in pretty quickly. And start running it through. Often pick up a, a quick fish. And you know, we're not trying to build a swim. I'm not trying to get a load of chub confident in there, really. I'm not going to stick it out in any particular swim. And there's not really going to be numbers of fish in any of these swims anyway. I just want to nick a quick bite. And then move on. Well, I've dropped in just below that tree. We're just fishing. 
just to see if uh, there's anything in here. I'm, it's not even a swim. I'm just sitting at the top of the bank. I could pro probably fight my way down there. It's going to be a bit precarious, so I think we'll stop up here. We'll just have a go, I think. So just down below that tree. We're just trotting down to. Do like working downstream when possible. Because obviously you're baiting up. If you're not getting any fish in the swim you're fishing, you're kind of baiting up the next swim as well. Because of the flow. Well, I can't imagine this, this gets fished. Because there's just... There's just no swim here. <laughs> I've certainly never fished it. So we'll see how we go. Well, it's running through nicely with that, that amount of depth on, so that's good. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right in the bottom of the pool. I thought I'd caught bottom again. I saw a little dip on the float. And I thought, oh, it's the bottom. <laughs> I can't do a lot with it at the moment. <laughs> it's gone under a couple of times down there. And I thought it was the bottom again, but we're in. It's trying its best to get in there. Undergrowth, of course. Come on, out, 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 out. I think he has. All right, let's go downstream so we can get him out. Oh, there we go. Bit of steady pressure. I'm going to go and try and pull him out from downstream. We got him out. I don't think he's huge. He's certainly using all the chubby tricks. Well, he's not huge, but he's a nice start. <laughs> Very long landing net handle required in this swim. Gotcha. <laughs> Fab. Oh, that's cracking. Let's say right, literally, right down the bottom of the pool there. Just before the, the bend. It has gone under a couple of times there. I did, did think, oh, it's it's just the bottom again. <laughs> Hence the uh, not very good strike. <laughs> but there we are. Wonderful in the morning sunlight. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, I've got him in the landing net down here. We'll stick him in there for 10 minutes. So he didn't, because if we put him back, he'll, uh, he'll certainly go back to scare all his mates. So we'll just keep him in there for 10 minutes. See if we can winkle another one out. It's often one swim, one fish. It can be a bit different when you're, when you're on the float. I'm not quite sure why. I don't know whether it's because it's moving or exactly what, but it does seem that sometimes you can winkle a couple of fish out. He's uh, it's perfectly okay down there in the net. And we're off the mark. Fab. Like I said, it was a very long way down the swim, though.
but I have found that as well sometimes you pick the first fish up a long way down the swim and then the next one will be a lot closer if you get another bite as I think they move up with to intercept the feed no I think we'll head off get this fella back and we'll head off There you go, chap. Off he goes. Fab. Right, I'm going to have a look at this corner, but uh, I think it's shallows off around there, so we'll perhaps get off upstream. Might be a waste of time, but I've decided <laughs> I couldn't walk past this swim again when we started in without uh, having another go, just to see if it settled down a bit <laughs> after we introduced that bait earlier on. Couldn't resist stopping off again. So we're gonna have 10 minutes in here. As I say, it might be a complete waste of time, but you never know. Fish might have switched onto the bread. You never know. <laughs> the good news is the sun's gone in. It's starting to cloud over a bit, but the bad news is this wind has picked up, picked up, picked up, and it's really blowing now. I'm really in two minds as to whether to even go up the top of the stretch, to be honest. It's going to be, it's going to be very, very difficult. We might be able to find the odd swim or two that's more sheltered, maybe. But it's on a bit of a sort of rainbow shape arc, this stretch so whereas down the bottom the wind's off the back the top it'll be <laughs> a facer so really the choice is fish the swims we did yesterday and, and I know we'll be able to fish them but we fished them yesterday <laughs> using similar tactics or identical tactics even So I don't think it's going to be very productive. Or we can go off uh, upstream where it's going to be very difficult trotting conditions. It's difficult here now. Um, it's going to be very difficult trotting conditions. But also there was some chaps fishing up there yesterday as well. So you know, we did get fish yesterday as well. Really don't know what to do. Because I think this swim was the one I had most bites in yesterday. This and the one right at the top there. And I can't get a bite in here today. Which is making me think that perhaps fishing the same swims is not a good idea. There we go. Blimey. Well, dropping back in here wasn't a bad move after all. <laughs> right down the bottom, float just suddenly started to go sideways. <laughs> Feels a reasonable fish. Using all the chubby tricks to get into the edge. Come on, out. I'll be a bit careful. I need a two pound bottom on. Whee! I'm not giving up yet. It's determined to get into that edge there.
God. Come on, all the chubby tricks. <laughs> determined to get into the edge here. <laughs> Absolutely determined. Oh, I think we've beaten him. Come on. Got him. <laughs> Fab. As always, I'd like to give him a bit of a rest. He put up a good account of himself, so we'll learn it. we'll give him a couple of minutes to get his breath back. Fab. There we go. Wonderful stuff. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, that's made uh, made getting out of bed worthwhile, definitely. And once again, I've got him in the landing net down here, <laughs> sulking in the edge, just to see if we can winkle another one or two out, perhaps. Now I've had this bite in here, I'm sort of tempted to go to the bottom swim now. Down there. Have another go in there. I fished that yesterday afternoon. Had a couple of chub out and a and a nice roach. Sort of tempted to go back down there. I think the, the further upstream we go, the harder it's gonna to get to to fish. Oh we could always go back to the car and grab the ledger gear. It's still going to be not very pleasant sat in this wind. It's, it's bizarre. It's a south, sort of south southeasterly, and it's um, very very bitey. It's like a northeasterly, to be honest. It's really bitey. Well, I've got thermals on and t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, and this hoodie. It's cutting straight through my back. Absolutely cutting me in off. This high is wonderful, and not even that. It's uh, I can feel the wind through it. For those of you perhaps new to fishing or uh, don't do a lot of trotting, the problem is with the wind. Obviously, it blows the line all over the place. You can't control your float. Bit of a dip then. I think it's that, probably the bottom. It's not so bad when, like here, we've got sort of the wind sort of going this way and we're a bit sheltered. I've got a shoulder high bank behind me and keep the line out of the wind. But if I go upstream and I've got a facer, it's just going to be blowing all the line back at me. It's going to make float control almost impossible. But that aside as well, if you've got a big boa line out and you get a bite, obviously you could be able to strike into the fish. You have lots and lots of line to pick up as well. So it's uh, that's the problem really with the wind. Right, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and have a go at that bottom swim. First, I'm going to nip to a swim that's only about 100 metres away from here. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to fish it in this wind and perhaps get down behind the bank. We'll have a go at that and then we'll, uh, we'll get off, go and fish downstream, I think. Right, time to get this fella back. Well rested up. There he goes. Oh, blimey. The torpedo. So I've hunkered, <laughs> hunkered down in this swim out of the wind. That's why I'm sat down. I really don't like sitting down when I'm trotting. But standing up in here is definitely going to be counterproductive. So I'm going to be stood up in the wind with a line in the wind and the rod definitely not the best idea so wind is absolutely whipping across the field behind me it's going over our heads fortunately 
Right, let's run a float through here for uh, 15 minutes. Not particularly fast run through here. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Pretty shallow there, the looks of it. Over there. Let's try a bit closer. There's a bit more flow. The flow is right on our near bank in here. No, still too shallow. Oh, we're way too deep, I should say. Oh, there we go. feel huge but just discovered the big slack area over there contrary to what you might think is actually much deeper than the faster water by my feet which you think would be scoured out it's uh, strange really got to be a chub the way he's trying to get in all this cover yeah <laughs> Trying to get in under my feet. There he is. Oh, he's a nice, nice fish. Come on, chap. Mouth open. There we go. Wonderful. Fantastic. Well, done him or her a little bit of a disservice. <laughs> it's a lovely fish. Wonderful stuff. Fab. Right. Get him down there. That's it. Lovely job. We'll uh, see if we can have another one out. Right, time for a move. Let's get this fella back. There you go, chap. Bad. Well, I found this little uh, interesting looking run through here. It's not a very long run, but there's a bit of a pool here. There might be a chubble roach hiding away in here. You never know. Just put a few bits of, uh, bits of bread in. Mashed bread, of course. We'll have 10 minutes in here, just see if there's anything about. Looks a nice pool, sort of a funneled in through a tree just above us here. Go away. And it just opens out and as you can see, uh, shadow's off again there. I'm amazed how the uh, the wind has dropped. Because <laughs> we wouldn't be able to fish up here if, if it hadn't. 
It was proper, uh, proper banging through earlier, wasn't it? Oh, well, <laughs> I thought that was the bottom, but it's not. <laughs> oh, well, it is. Very funny old fight. Chub, I would think, <laughs> judging by where it's trying to get. <laughs> there he goes, off out. <laughs> well, it's a nice surprise. I just deepened off and I thought I'd got the bottom. And now it's starting to put up a bit of a scrap. <laughs> I say no monster, I don't think there's no monster, but certainly, certainly very welcome. Let's land him over the top of it. What's well, a lovely fish. Wonderful. There we are. <laughs> no monster, as I said, but great fun. <laughs> very nice to get a bite. Again, it's been probably at least an hour since I had a bite. So that's very welcome. Right, we're sticking down there. Let's stick him over there, that's better. For certainly if we let him go in this pool, <laughs> we're not gonna get any more bites. Wonderful, right. Well, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll be able to winkle another one out. Who knows? <laughs> Fingers crossed. We'll do one more swim. It's supposed to start raining any second. Put this fella back. Oh, blimey, he's very ready to go back. <laughs> oh, I'm back you go, chap. Very graceful return, but there you go. Well, I think due to the fact that the water level's down, <laughs> it's making it very slippy, uh, but I can get lower down, so I think I've got room to use a rod in here. That's great. And the wind has really picked up and we're sort of sheltered in here. It's just a, a lovely bit of fast water on the far side, as you can see. And a lovely bit of slack on the inside. usually good for a bite yeah you have to be a bit careful we normally have to sit six foot back there <laughs> and uh, you're right under the trees there but today we can stand down and we're much lower and out a bit away from the trees Well, hopefully, we can winkle a fish out here. I say it's usually good for a bite. I've had some chub in here and had some roach in here in the past, but never, never float fished it. Just let the float do do what it wants, really. Go where it wants. I think it's stuck on the bottom there, I think. There we go. Oh. I looked away, looked back round, the float had gone. <laughs> and that was a chub. <clears throat> Felt like a chub anyway. That's annoying. <laughs> oh.
Well, I'm going to call it a day at that. Nothing doing in here after that fish we unfortunately bumped off. But uh, that's not a surprise, is it? <laughs> but yeah, I've uh, had a thoroughly enjoyable morning down here and the weather's played ball much better than it was supposed to. But uh, the storm clouds are certainly gathering now. <laughs> it's going very dark. So uh, yeah, time to get off home, I think. Now, I am planning on getting out over the weekend as well. As I said, going to make the most of the season, what's left of it. But that's for next time. For now, thank you very much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed that. Tight lines, if you get out there. Hope you have a great end to the season. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support. And I'll see you all again very soon.